So if you are going to go and get um, a consumer unit changed, one thing that I would always do is I will insist on um, the DNO coming to pull this. Now this, this is called a main cutout. This is, this doesn't belong to you and it doesn't, but I'm, I'm not allowed to touch this legally by law. I am not allowed to touch this fuse. Now this has already been pulled out by my local DNO. Um, they're very good, it's National Grid. Um, I never have any problems with the guys. They come out, they pull it for me. They've gone off today, but this is all dead. So you can see here by the meter, everything is dead because the fuse has been pulled out. Now, I, I liaise with uh, the DNO over this, um, but I, prior to a consumer unit change, this, this needs to be changed. You can see there's a hole there, there's holes there. It's not compliant, that's a C2 code because you can stick your fingers in there and get a shock. And C2 means that, no, not allowed that. So this, um, I'm gonna put an isolator switch here. And what that means is when the DNO come back, they can put the fuse back in, re-energize everything. But I am now able to to not have to, I don't need to pull this. Now some electricians will pull that, but I, I, I'm not comfortable with it just because there are so many different types. Some even have asbestos in, and if anything goes wrong, I'm not covered because I'm not allowed to pull that fuse. So I'm gonna put my isolator switch right here. I'm gonna move this out of the way if I can. Um, if, I, if I'm not gonna cause too much problem, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Um, and I will put my oscillator switch there and then the tails will go from there into there and then into the new consumer unit when I install it. So from here, I am gonna take the tails so um, I'm gonna loop from here, because this is the live out. This is where the, the feed comes out. So it comes from the cutout into the meter. And then from the meter, so this is where it registers what's being used now for the meter. And here I'm gonna loop all the way into the isolator switch. And then these tails are gonna go into the consumer unit so that it, I can just isolate it manually. I can do it without having to pull this fuse out, which I'm not allowed to do by law. So I need some new meter tails, so which I've got to go from here all the way, in, and they will be 25 millimeter as well, which is up to which is up to standard. This is actually a big debate that rumbles on in the uh, electricians industry. It is whether you should pull the fuse or not, and there are a lot of people that just pull it, um, even though it's not allowed. And it's probably not even that, it, you know. I'm just, I'm just, I just like to, I like to be cautious and just make sure that I'm doing things properly. Um, I understand the other side of the argument, but it's just not how I work. So I, um, I always call the DNO just in case anything goes wrong and get them to pull it because it's, it's just not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So I'm just stripping the cable here. I'm not upgrading them yet, but these will be upgraded to uh, the 25 millimeter. But for now, uh, I'm because I'm changing this consumer unit, I will do that then. There's no point in doing it now. So for now, I'm just gonna put this supply back in to the new isolator, but I will be changing it. Down fuse, and I've seen one of those blow once, and that was when a cooker pan uh, blew up on a, um, on a on an old hob, and it blew a hole in the pan. The the current 
came all the way back through and cut the supply with this, which was staggering because it was 100 amps, that's a lot. Certainly enough to kill a person. But this now means I can cut the power uh, when needed, whereas before I wasn't able to do that. But now it's, it's fine. So that's all ready now for the DNA to come back. The only thing I've got to do is change these tails and, and change that consumer unit, but I'll be doing that later. But for now, I can now cut the power with this. There was one other thing I wanted to say about um, pulling this fuse. I mean, it's all very well pulling the fuse, but what happens is, uh, this is a smart meter. So when this fuse is pulled, um, somewhere along the line, uh, the, the electricity supplier knows that this has been pulled. And so they can be alerted, uh, so the, the, um, the, the power company can alert National Grid, or I'm not quite sure which way it goes around, but they can, someone's alerted to the fact that there is no meter, which means that um, there's no, no one's paying for the electricity. So you can't just bypass this if anyone's thinking that. You can't do that because they will be here in a flash. Um, and, but that's the other reason why I don't pull the fuse, because if, 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 if people are alerted to the fact that the, that the power's just stopped, because this is the only way that the power stops in the property. Like, even if you turn off all of the electricity here, and you turn it off here, there's still a supply going into the meter, so it's, it's registered. But the minute you pull that, the power from this stops, and so therefore, it, people, authorities are alerted. And as you know, you know, if we don't pay our electricity bill, they're here in a flash. If you've got a problem, they take five million hours. But this now means I can cut the power uh, when needed, whereas before, I wasn't able to do that. But now, it's, it's fine. So that's all ready now for the DNA to come back. The only thing I've got to do is change these tails and, and change that consumer unit, but I'll be doing that later. Just think you can oh, uh, pull this out and then take that out of the loop, because you can't do that. But that is the other reason why I will always call the DNO to pull this fuse. Um, apart from the fact that it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Uh, but yeah.